So the topic for today's lecture is metalloenzymes. So metalloenzymes is basically a part of our bioinorganic chemistry. So what is this bioinorganic chemistry? The bioinorganic chemistry is basically the studies of the functions of metal in biological system using the knowledge and methods of inorganic chemistry. Basically, what does this bioinorganic chemistry does? It helps to it helps to find the actions of several metal ions in our biological system by using several methods and uh, processes of inorganic chemistry. Some here basically a list of some bioactive substances that containing metals, which uh, this fun this, uh, these are the functions which are happening in our biological systems. And here and here are few metalloproteins which are helping to perform these functions in our body. Let's discuss about it one by one. Um, oxygen storage and transportation transportation agent for this specific phenomena to happen hemoglobin myoglobin hemoerythrin and hemocytin these are few metalloproteins which are helping to storage and transportation of oxygen in in the living organism hemoglobin and myoglobin and hemoerythrin these three metalloproteins are using iron as their metal ions whereas hemocytin is using copper as a metal ion and uh, among all this, hemoglobin, hemoerythrin, and hemocyanin, this all the hem containing proteins, these are helping in oxygen transportation in our body. Whereas in the myoglobin, this metalloprotein uh, specifically helps in oxygen storage in the muscle tissues. Now, next, let's, next move on to metalloenzymes. There are uh, uh, we have we are discussing four types of metalloenzymes: carbonic anhydrase, carboxypeptidase, LADA, superoxide dimutase. We will discuss this metalloenzyme thing uh, in a broad spectrum later. So let's skip this and let's uh, move on to electron transfer. For this phenomena to happen, electron transport, uh, transport, cytochrome and uh, iron sulfur protein, which which are having iron as the metal ion whereas blue copper protein which is having copper as their metal ion is helping in electron transfer during the respirations or um, energy production in our human in our human body or rather in other biological system in you know, other living organism um, Cytochrome is a very uh, known term. This cytochrome is present in mitochondria. Mitochondria is also called the energy house of the cell. So basically, this met these metalloproteins are are helping in transportation of electrons to various different parts of human body. Next, we have storage and transport of metal. Uh, here, uh, ferritin, transferrin, and methylo methylonine these three metalloproteins are helping to perform this storage and transport of metals uh, for example ferritin transferrin these two metalloproteins are having iron as their metal ion uh, ferritin is that metalloprotein which basically uh, store iron and the main function of ferritin is that it stores iron during circulation and transferrin is that blood uh, is that blood plasma protein which helps in transfer of iron from blood to different other tissues nitrogen fixation this method uses atmospheric nitrogen to convert to ammonia by uh, during this process the most important metalloenzyme used is used is nitrogenous next we have Photosynthesis during photosynthesis, chlorophyll is one of the metalloproteins which has magnesium as a metallo ion. Again, we have nitrogen, uh, sodium potassium pump. Now, this is a very important phenomena which takes place in the plasma membrane of our humans, of our cells. I mean cells. 
So what is does the sodium potassium pump uses a specific metalloenzyme known as sodium potassium ATPL, which basically helps in this process of exchange of sodium and potassium in the cell in the plasma membrane and helps to maintain the osmotic pressure of the cell. So these are, these are few uh, applications, rather applications of our bioinorganic chemistry. So today, uh, since today our main topic is metalloenzymes, so let's move on to metalloenzymes. This is metalloenzymes. So in this segment of the lecture, we are going to focus on how this metalloenzyme functions. This metalloenzymes contain our metal ions, as we know, metal cations rather, as the cofactor. So what this term cofactor means? This cofactor is the non-butanous part of the enzyme which helps to bind with the enzyme with the With help, with helps the uh, with so this co cofactor helps the enzyme to bind with the substrate, and the and the main role of this metal uh, cations is and the, and the main role of this metal cation is to assist this biochemical reaction of the uh, sub of the substrate binding process, and so this metal cations is directly bond to the proteins or to the enzyme bound non protein components or the prosthetic groups uh, there there can be different types of metal cations for example zinc copper which are helping to do to perform uh, the enzymes during the metal during the enzyme binding process or uh, in the enzyme binding process with the substrate so this enzymes also have a wide range of reactions which include hydrolytic process here in this process it uh, the uh, with the addition of the water molecules um, large compounds uh, are broken down into smaller pieces and also the oxy oxy oxidation reduction and also the oxidation reduction process or the redox process where a species undergoes oxidation and another species under undergoes reduction by using Above mentioned processes, this metalloenzymes perform various roles in the inward environment and the living organism. For there, here are a few examples which are scripted below. Uh, for example, uh, we have already um, discussed that uh, during the nitrogen fixation process, process in the soil, nitrogen gets converted to nitrogen uh, from the atmosphere get converted get converted to ammonia and in this nitrogen fixation process uh, enzyme known as nitrogenous this enzyme plays a vital role for and is helping this and and, to help, and helping for this process to enhance i mean uh, to perform so, and the next we have amide a cleavage of the amide group to afford this uh, function to occur. Protease is one of the enzymes which is helping it. Uh, again, we have cleavage uh, pro uh, phosphate ester for phosphate ester bonds. For this, phosphodiesterase uh, enzyme is used. Super uh, oxide dimutase, which is um, using the reaction the dis which is using the disproportion reaction uh, and it and it destroys the superoxide anion ribosome also undergoes cell cleavage these are few metalloenzymes which are helping to do this following processes so now let's move on to our uh, first we are going to discuss uh, so we are going to discuss four types of metalloenzyme here the first we have carbonic anhydrase or is also known as exopeptidase. So, what is this carbonic anhydrase? Uh, as we can see, this is the structure of this carbonic anhydrase. Here, zinc is bonded to four. Sorry, here zinc is bonded to three histidine pro uh, proteins and one H2O molecule. And it, and since it forms four bonds, it is sp3 hybrid, as we can see, and it also shows tetrahedral geometry. And the zinc is having a plus two oxidation state. 
is, is uh, and so uh, here is detent metal presence zinc one uh, bonded with one or uh, 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 H2O molecules and three histidine proteins. And the main function of this carbon carboning anhydrase, as we, as we know, anhydrase uh, is um, release of H2O, release of the water molecules. So the function of this carboning anhydrase is that it catalyzes the hydration of CO2. And this reaction, catalyzation of the hydration of CO2, mainly occurs in the tissues whereas this dehydration of the carbonic acid that is um, where, where H2, H2CO3 is converted to CO2 again this is this the reaction is occurs in lungs and the hydration of CO2 where H2O where CO2 is taking H2 and forming H2CO3 carbonic acid this reaction is taking place in the tissues and the dehydration of the carbonic acid where H2O, where H2O is released and uh, H2CO3 is converted to CO2 again this is called is uh, carbonic acid. This is the mechanism of how it is uh, done. So here, ZnOH2 or this this part of the enzyme, this part of the of the enzyme where zinc is attached to OH2 molecule. Um, since since this OH2 molecule is having lone pairs, the zinc will the zinc will abstract abstract this lone pair and becomes acidic. Ha, since this zinc is the Lewis base, sorry, Lewis acid, since this uh, zinc is the Lewis acid, this Lewis acid, that means it will it will have the tendency to abstract electrons. So this zinc will abstract this lone pair electrons from OH2 and this oxygen will develop a positive charge since this structure is unstable, a uh, positive charge over oxygen is unstable. So, it, so this one hydrogen will be released and it will form ZnOH. This ZnOH will act as the active site. This ZnOH will act as the active site. So why we are calling it active site and also this, this ZnOH which is formed here this OH this OH will act as nucleophile 2 sorry so this um this OH will act as This OH will act as nucleophile, and this OH will abstract. This OH will um, react with this carbon center of the CO2, and carbon center of CO2, and this double bond will push back to O. o. So this is the active site since it is reacting with this electrophilic CO2, and hence, as we can see, a five coordinated uh, so we can see hence a five coordinated five coordinated uh, structure is formed we can see a five coordinated structure is formed after this uh, nucleophilic uh, oxygen is uh, uh, oxygen attack this carbon center of co2 electrophilic carbon center of co2 and hence a five uh, five coordinate intermediates is formed here. Five coordinate intermediate is formed. So after this formation of this five coordinated intermediate, this H two since this is the uh, since this intermediate structure is not stable and uh, this um, is not stable so this h2 molecule will attack the zn plus uh, zn2 plus ion and this zno bond will break hco3 minus will be liberated and uh, the as it is structure of the uh, carbonic anhydrase molecule will 
regain and this HCO3 minus will take the H plus ion that is liberated during this process. This uh, during this process where ZnOH2 get converted to ZnOH and will uh, hence form carbonic acid H2CO3. So what is this reaction? So this reaction since this so what is the type of this reaction basically? So the type of this reaction is um, since CO2 being an electrophile, since CO CO2 being an electrophile and the NOH being a nucleophile, this nucleophile will attack the carbon center of CO2 and and this CO2 will uh, will then uh, and this addition of the CO2 will further take place. So this reaction will also be known as. So it's the electrophilic addition reaction and what is the active side? Active side is basically that part of uh, straight uh, uh, active side is that part of the enzyme which which uh, takes which uh, binds with the substrate. So here this since this OH is taking part in this reaction, you know, is OH is taking part in this reaction. So this is OH is known as the active side of this reaction. Next we have carboxypeptidase. It is same as that of carboxy anhydrase. The only difference is that uh, here instead of three histamine histamine protein, we have one glutamic acid. And uh, on obviously oxygen state is plus two of Zn, and it also uh, shows a tetrahedral geometry. And the function of this oh sorry. The function of this carboxypeptidase is the hydrolysis of peptide bond in protein chain from carbon uh, terminal side during the process of digestion. So uh, here, uh, from the protein uh, chain, uh, hydrolysis of peptide bond takes place. That is, the liberation of NH2 will uh, occur. Um, and so, from where it is, it is basically performed from the carbon terminal side. Here we have two. Uh, Groups R1 and R2. R2 is the bulky group and R uh, than R1. R2 is uh, is a bulky group than R1. So the reaction will or this OH minus will attack uh, from that carbon center where the bulky group is present. It will not attack from here or here or this carbon center or this carbon center. Rather, it will choose the carbon center where the bulky group is present. That is the R2. So this OH minus will attack that this carbon, then it is push back and pull back, and this NH will uh, leave, and hence uh, the and this OH will end. So this is uh, the reaction where where uh, that is happening in the process during the process of digestion where hydrolysis of peptide bond is taking place. Now we have uh, next we have LADH. Uh, this is also known as liver alcohol dehydrogenase. Here. Uh, the structure is also uh, similar to that of carboxypeptidase or carboxyanidase, but uh, the difference is that here Zn is connected to two cysteine uh, protein. Two cysteine protein. So how it is connected? Uh, here a diagram is shown where how it is connected. This Zn is connected to the S side of the cysteine protein, sulfur uh, sulfur uh, side of the cysteine protein. So. Um, so it is it is also having tetrahedral uh, geometry and the main function of this LADH is that it converts primary alcohol to aldehyde and secondary alcohol to uh, ketone with the help of NAD plus uh, which is also known as nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So um, so this LADH the structure uh, the cysteine protein is get connected with the end via this sulfur and it is also got tetrahedral geometry like the previous two and this function is that this the in the presence of any d plus uh primary alcohol gets converted to aldehyde and secondary alcohol gets converted to ketone this is the reaction of LADA. and so we have taken a secondary alcohol which is getting getting converted to So here is the reaction where the secondary alcohol, a two degree alcohol, two degree alcohol gets converted to ketone, ketone, you can see double bond of uh, O. Uh, so how is that happening? This in the here, this lone pair of OH will form uh, 
a double bond with carbon and this hydrogen will get liberated this uh, this uh, h h plus will this uh, and hence uh, th this type of intermediate structure will form where o is o is having a positive charge and since this structure is not stable so uh, this hydrogen will also get liberated and hence ketone is formed and this nad plus this will take this and this will this will take the liberated hydrogen h plus and will form nadh so again i'm going to uh, repeat it uh, here two degree alcohol gets converted to ketone gets converted to ketone the lone pair of o, o oxygen will form a double bond and this h plus will get liberated this a latter this nad plus which, which is reacting with the uh, secondary alcohol this nad plus will take the hydrogen liberated hydrogen will form nadh and here they will form a intermediate structure where o is having a positive charge which is obviously very unstable so o will so this h plus will get with release and this ketone molecule will form so uh this is all about LADH and this and this reaction by which a secondary alcohol gets converted to ketone and and this like same like this same uh, uh first one degree alcohol will also get converted to a aldehyde molecule. Uh, so uh, the question is we have seen that in carbo carbonic anhydrase in uh, carboxy peptides and also in LADH. Why always this zinc ketan is used? Why other uh, ketan is not used? So we have listed few reasons why zinc is chosen. Um, here it states that nature has chosen zinc metal and as the active site of many hydrolytic enzymes. Uh, first uh, is obviously zinc is present in plus two oxidation state and uh, it is a uh, redox inactive that is this oxidation state that is it will never get converted to any other uh, oxidation state always stay in this in this plus two oxidation state and will never get converted to plus one or plus two like this state will be so uh, this is, since it is redox inactive that is it this zinc will never participate in redox reaction and will never get converted to any other oxygen state that is plus one or plus three it will always stay in this plus two oxygen state uh, and uh, and it will form uh, it will form a tetrahedral geometry and the fourth point is that it's a very good lewis acid as we have said that lewis acid have a tendency to accept electrons and this zinc having with plus two oxygen state is a very good lewis acid lewis acid it will it will um it will uh, so and on and the last point is it is borderline hard acid which prefer to bind with hard vessels uh it is a borderline hard acid so it will always it will always prefer to bind with hard base so these are the few reasons why we always choose always choose rather zinc as uh, the metal ion we need to know what is this disproportionation reaction disproportionation reaction is similar to that of uh, a redox reaction where uh, redox reaction is that reaction where one species is getting reduced and the other species is getting oxidized here co2 is getting reduced to c6h2o6 and h2o is getting oxidized to o2 so here two species a uh, species in here two species that is one species is getting oxidized and again the other species is getting uh, reduced two different species but in this proportion reaction only one species is there and this species will undergo both oxidation this species will undergo both oxidation and reduction here oxidation is taking place and here reduction is taking place and here reduction is taking place so here so the major difference is that here two species are performing and here one species will perform both reduction and oxidation so this is the reaction of the superoxide dismutase where this superoxide to uh, o2 minus will get reduced so so this is the reaction of superoxide dismutase where this 2o2 minus is a superoxide where it this o2 minus is getting reduced to minus 2 uh, h2o2 and this o2 minus will also get oxidized to 2o2 one species is performing both reduction 
and oxidation. So there are there are three types of superoxide dismutase: copper zinc superoxide dismutase, M this SOD is nothing but it's superoxide dismutase. Magnesium superoxide dismutase and iron superoxide dismutase. This copper and zinc uh, superoxide dismutase is present in mitochondria of the eukaryotes, and this uh, Mn and Fe uh, superoxide dismutase is present in the prokaryotes such as bacteria. So um, let's move on to our last slide of this segment. Uh, copper and so we are going to discuss about this copper and zinc superoxide dismutase. This is the structure of copper and zinc superoxide dismutase where we can see this copper and zinc are bridged by a histine protein, histidine protein, and um, this copper and there are all total six histidine protein and one histidine protein is acting as a bridging bridging ligand between this copper and zinc and this copper is having one OH2 molecule and three histidine and zinc is having two histidine and one aspert, aspartic protein chain. So, uh, um, and this copper will show, uh, as we can see this copper is having one, two, three, four, five bonds. So, this copper will show a square pyramidal geometry square square pyramidal geometry and the zinc will show again this tetrahedral geometry so why it is like this why this copper is showing a square a pyramidal whereas the zinc is showing a tetrahedral geometry This copper 2 9 is having a D9 configuration. This copper 2, 9, 2 plus is having a D9 configuration, and so it will show a Jan Taylor JT effect. JT effect we have studied in our previous semester. So Since this copper 2 plus is showing a D9 configuration, so it will show uh, show uh, Jan Taylor uh, effect. And for this effect, the, the structure is getting distorted, so it will show a square pyramidal structure. And this zinc will, as it is, show a tetrahedral structure. The reason why it's showing is that we know, according to the electron utility principle, after cobalt, uh, the elements show tetrahedral geometry and if they are surrounded by high electronegativity atoms they can show coordinate number from plus 4 to plus 4 to plus 6 so they are according to, to, to the electron utility, utility principle so according to the electron utility principle uh, the elements which is uh, from copper onwards will show tetrahedral geometry and if this this zinc uh, i mean in this uh, they are surrounded by atoms of high electronegativity they will they can show coordinate number from plus 4 to plus 6 so uh, what is the role of copper and what is the role of zinc is zinc in, is zinc replaceable so first let's uh, clear this question role of copper uh, this copper here plays the role of the active metal this copper is not replaceable like this this is the main element of this of this super of this uh, reaction or rather this, this the, so what is the role of copper this copper uh, is the is the active metal like this is the irreplaceable metal but this what is the role of zinc zinc in, is basically supporting this metal and he, uh, and helping to maintain its stability and uh, and the last question is is zinc replaceable like uh, can we replace zinc like this is as we have said that this copper is the active metal and this zinc is a supporting metal that, that is just helping copper to uh, maintain or to help in uh, stability maintain stability so uh, we can replace zinc zinc can be replaced by co zinc can be replaced by 
कोबल्ट टू प्लस एंड कैडमियम टू प्लस सो इफ वी पोर्ट कोबल्ट और कैडमियम इन प्लेस ऑफ जिंक इट विल ऑल्सो वर्क सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट सुपर ऑक्साइड डिस्म्यूटेज कॉपर एंड जिंक सुपर ऑक्साइड डिस्म्यूटेज वेयर कॉपर एंड जिंक फॉर्म्स अ ब्रिजिंग लिगेंड वेयर हैविंग अ ब्रिजिंग हिस्टीडिन प्रोटीन एंड कॉपर इज शोइंग स्क्वायर पिरामिडल स्ट्रक्चर वेयर जिंक इज शोइंग टेट्राडल स्ट्रक्चर कॉपर इज शोइंग स्क्वायर पिरामिडल स्ट्रक्चर ड्यू टू द जी नाइन कॉन्फिग्रेशन द डेंटलर इफेक्ट एंड सो दिस इज ऑल सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट आवर टॉपिक मेटेलो एंजाइम्स नाउ लेट्स स्टार्ट अ न्यू सेगमेंट ऑफ दिस बाई इन ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री दैट इज दिस इज ऑल्सो अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट राधा अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ द बाई इन ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री दैट इज अ सोडियम पोटेशियम पम्प आई हैव डिस्कस इन द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट आई हैव states that the the sodium potassium pump helps uh, to maintain the osmotic pressure in the cell. So how it is doing? We will discuss here. First, we will say that the transport of ions in the bilayer membrane is done by the sodium potassium pump. So um, this is a very common fact that uh, the flow in during the flow of liquid is have it this flow of liquid happens from high concentration to low concentration. And 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 it occurs along the concentration gradient. But here, the the transport of ions works in the reverse condition. That is, uh, it is working against the concentration gradient. That is, normally, uh, liquid flows from high to low concentration, but transport of ion is working from low to high concentration, and um. and here the question lies is the how many uh, sodium or how many potassium ion is taking place in this ion trans transport the ion and two potassium ion takes place in this in this sort in this um, ion transfer method okay so what is this i have said i have this i have mentioned a, a term bilayer I have mentioned the term bilayer cell membrane. So this bilayer cell membrane it is divided into two parts. One is the polar part, and the other is the non-polar part. This polar part, as we can see, is the hydrophilic center. That is, that is the water-loving center, and this non-polar part is the hydrophobic center or, or the water-hating center. We can say. So this is the bilayer member membrane. One layer, two layer. and this is the outside of the bilayer membrane so in the inside of the bilayer membrane we have three sodium ion and two potassium ion and in the outside of this bilayer membrane we have three sodium again we have three sodium ion and two potassium ion inside this cell membrane the concentration of sodium ion is low and the concentration of, of uh, potassium ion is high again outside the cell membrane that uh, it is uh, just the reverse is happening that is the sodium ion concentration is high and the potassium ion concentration is low so this is, this should be the concept of the bilayer membrane this is the overall reaction which is happening here um if if this sodium ion inside this bilayer membrane if its concentration increases we have to, and or and this concentration of potassium ion decreases we have to decrease the concentration and increase this decrease the concentration of sodium ion and increase the concentration of potassium ion so how we will do it for uh, for uh, doing it we need energy so this atp will provide this energy along with h2o and in this atp will itself get transferred to adp and inorganic phosphate so um this is the overall reaction that is happening here so if the concentration if in the bilayer membrane membrane the concentration of sodium is higher and then the concentration of potassium is ion is lower uh, we need to in we need to increase the concentration of potassium and so uh, so by for we need to increase the concentration of potassium ion for doing this 
we need at ATP in as as a source of energy along with H two O, and hence it will it and hence this uh, sodium ion will again uh, gain its low concentration, and this potassium ion will again gain its high concentration inside this bilayer cell membrane, and the and the equilibrium will be maintained. And this ADP we will get transferred to ADP and this this polar uh, and in this bilayer membrane, this polar part and this non-polar part. They are attached by the electrostatic interaction, and this overall reaction, this overall reaction which is happening here, this is taking, this is done by this sodium potassium pump, K plus pump. Now we have ionophores. This is the last part of this topic. So, what is ionophore? The a a question comes to our mind is that uh, is this ion transfer this method is this happening automatically? No, it's not. This transfer of this ion is done by some chemical compound. So, the chemical compound which is helping this trans transfer of ions in, in this bilayer membrane cell membrane. These are called ionophores. So ionophore is the chemical compound that helps the transfer of ions, specifically hard cations. So this is the this is the list of the cations and the ionophores. Transport of sodium is done by valinomycin, salinomycin. Transport of calcium uh, two plus is done by ionomycin, calmodulin, and uh, ammonium ion done by nonactin, no nonactin, and uh, lastly the transport of Iron two plus and iron three plus is done by interbacterium. So this, so this is all about uh, today's lecture. Thank you for listening.